my uh, oops, and my uh, tribal name is uh, Turkey Man. Uh, I'm Potawatomi, as I expect most of you guys are too, and uh, I'm Citizen Band specifically, and I'm here in Las Cruces, New Mexico. I guess, uh, uh, <laughs> I'll jump in real quick. Bojo Jayak, Ninue Magani Duke, Dewegan, the Indigenous Cause, Mako and Do Dum, Jimboy Nishna Benini and Dow, Kabakan, meanwhile, Shabitan, meanwhile, Machpanashwa Shaki and Dida, Gun Lake Language and Culture, Edge McCheweyan, Nui Jaganashi Bajina, my name is uh, James Day. I'm the Language and Culture Director for the Mashpanashuish Band of uh, Gun Lake Potawatomi Indians, and uh, happy to be here uh, and um, I'm excited to hear um, a presentation today about uh, Medicine Wheel, and I might chime in a little bit here and there, but um, I'll turn it back over to you guys. Miigwech. Good evening. I'm Melissa Brown, a citizen of the Gun Lake Tribe, and I haven't finished eating dinner. So once I introduce myself, I'm going to turn my camera off so you guys don't have to watch me eat here. So happy to be here. All right, has everyone had a chance to introduce themselves who wanted to? Hello. My name is Michelle Mabe. Um, I live in Virginia, right across the border from North Carolina. Um, I actually am, my tribal membership is pending. It goes before committee next week. And my sister was so gracious to send me this invite so that I can learn more about tribal culture. Hi, I'm Natsumi. Um, I live in um, Kalamazoo, and I just was interested in learning more about the, the tribe and, and culture. So thank you for having me. I do apologize. I had to relocate. I am working at home and I have a very playful daughter and I feel like that will be a bit distracting. So moving spots here. All right. Well, a few ground rules before we get started. Um, these are kind of a more casual open discussion. So feel free to chime in when you see fit. Um, I'll have a visual and that visual aid comes from our casino celebration trainings, which is their onboarding trainings. So if you see something in the background of the visual with our medicine wheel, that is why. Um, and I'll go ahead and share my screen in just a second. All right. Are you guys able to hear me okay? Yes. Okay, awesome. And we're able to see the medicine reel, correct? Yes, as well. Awesome. Great. All right. Just take a moment, everyone, and just look. have a look. And then we're going to talk about what you're noticing. Feel free to share any observations. Just to let everyone know too, 
most of the time you can zoom in on that if it's small. If you're on your phone or whatever, all you got to do is pinch in and it should be able to zoom in if it's a little small, but you should be able to do that um, either on a laptop or on a phone. So just let you know. Well, if, if no one's willing to share, then I'll, I'll just get right into it. Um, with our medicine wheel, you'll notice that it's a circle. And many things in our culture and our teachings, there's no real beginning or end. But if I had to pick a starting point, we'd start in the east. Does anyone know why we start in the east? Sunrise is in the east. Exactly. Yep, the sun rises in the east, so we're going to start with our sunrise. Our east direction is Wedgmokuk. That direction is related to spring. It, the infant stage, our tobacco, our sema, and one's thinking. So this is the early stage of life, like children, young children, and... I'm going to take a little bit to talk about tobacco or SEMA. This is said to be one of our, our first medicines that we were given as people. And it's one that we often use as an offering to give thanks. So let's say I have a really important question I want to ask an elder. One of our traditions would be to give that elder SEMA to give them tobacco usually in the form of a tobacco tie, which is just a little pouch of tobacco um, made out of cloth and tied together. So we'd give that, and that's how we'd ask for information. Another way we, another way we use our, our SEMA is if we're out in the woods uh, foraging or harvesting, you know, we'd think that that tree, that living being, um, for giving us the materials we need to get what we need to get done. Um, we also do that when we're when we're out hunting. I know hunting season's approaching, and it's kind of a way that we we pray as well is with our our tobacco. We put that that prayer down with that tobacco. Another way that that is used is in our uh, pipe ceremonies, which are present at a lot of our major events. And um, this medicine, tobacco, is typically taken care of by our, our men. And um, Bud, I don't know if you wanna chime in and talk a little bit more about that. I, I just feel it's appropriate as, you're, I, as I am not a man. If you're there, did I lose them? And it looks like you lost him. Yep. Okay. Well, enough about the medicine. Then I'll I'll go on and talk about some more stuff in their east quadrant. Um, you know we've got spring. It's the you know in that time of year. It's kind of like the beginning of life, which relates to the the infant stage kind of everything starting back up again. Uh, we think of, so our new year traditionally would be like our um, our maple sugar camp. So that's kind of like end of winter, beginning of spring, that's our new year, um, you know, renewal and bright and happy things because things are coming back to life, which has to do with, with our yellow. Um, so do we have any questions on our, our East spring quadrant of our medicine wheel? None from me. Thank you. What is the ones thinking? What does that represent or mean, Cass? Uh, really, it's just, um, 
kind of the the questions that kids ask like what's this and why is that and um really just the beginning of you know um being conscious and and thinking thoughts and ex exploration that's what i like to think about when i'm referring to that thank you i um i will i was gonna share at the end when she's done as well but i um I like to uh, focus on, on those healths. So that would be like mental health. Um, and then we have physical health, emotional health and spiritual health. So I um, was planning on touching on that a little bit after um, Cassie's through sharing. So I can um, elaborate a little bit on, on kind of what I was taught as well at that point. But uh, yeah, so I'll, I'll chime in at the end. Well, if we have no more questions, I think it'll the the floor is yours, Bud. Um, so just uh to focus on a little bit on those on those uh, health stages I just mentioned, um, a lot of you know sometimes with like Cassie said, you know it's a lot of uh. Um, so I get questions sometimes when I'm sharing, like, why would mental health be during the infant stage? But if you think about um, where we're at as infants, um, you know, for the very first part of our lives, um, that's where we're doing uh, a lot of soaking things in. We're being sponges for the first pretty much two years of our life. We are just... Um, watching observing taking everything in you know we don't we usually don't uh speak at that point of our lives you know we're we're just uh we're just learning how to to what everything is you know everything's new to us and uh and at that point in our stage of life at the infant stage a lot of times we used to um we used to be uh in our our baby boards or our cradle boards and um, a lot of times they would say that those cradle boards were our first first teachers, you know, some one of our first teachers, I should say. And because they would teach us um, patience, they would teach us, uh, you know, to what it, like a proper embrace, what it felt like to be taken care of, protected in that board. You know, we were swaddled and tied in there real secure. Um, so we it, it taught us, uh, you know, how to use our core, you know, um, taught us, you know, a bunch of different things, you know, in there. But also it, what, it, what it, the major thing it did is it allowed our parents to continue to do whatever the tasks, chores, responsibilities that they needed to do. And uh, while we were in there, we were protected, we were safe, but it allowed us to watch and listen. And so you know, that our mental health stage there, it's not necessarily saying that that's where it's, it's peaking, but that's where, that's where a lot of the majority of, of our mental uh, capacity where we're learning to learn um, takes place. And then, you know, when we move, I'll just, you know, that one's kind of the bigger one, you know, that it, um, it takes a little bit more to explain, but, you know, and then when we get to the the south and then we get that physical stage you know physical health um that's where where our bodies change where we're adolescent age you know and we're going through puberty and and we're you know that's where where that physical health starts to really come into play and then uh and then i'll just kind of shoot around on those ones um cast so then when we come to the uh the western quadrant there and we get that emotional health you know, sometimes people would think like, oh, well, maybe physical and emotional health, maybe they could be switched, you know, um, but really in actuality, you know, we don't, we're not um, at our prime emotional health until we're an adult, you know, and they used to say that what is like 23 until your brain's fully developed. But now they're saying, you know, for, for 
some some people it's like 28 you know that our brain is fully developing and so we're not you know able to be you know we've all been 18 19 and thinking that we're you know on top of the world or we have everything together but really emotionally we're not there yet you know and then so when we get to the elder stage of life that northern quadrant there um that's where um, our spiritual health is, and that's where we begin to really uh, hone in on 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 all things spiritual. And you know, a lot of times, you know, there's a reason why when you go to a lodge or a ceremony or even even uh, what other religions, you know, other faiths, you know, like you go to church, you know, there's a lot of old people in in there, you know, in in, in those places and. You know, they're at that point in their life where they're really wanting to um, hone in those spirits, that spirituality and making those connections or reconnecting, you know, but those are just kind of a guide. You know, it's not saying that somebody who's a, a teenager isn't really, really connected or doesn't really have that spirituality connection just yet um, or, or, you know, and so everyone's different, you know, um, and it's kind of a, uh, used as a guide. But, um, you know, when you were thinking about those different four different healths, you know, mental, physical, spiritual um, and emotional, you know, they're they all have a place and and everyone's different, you know, and there's going to be exceptions to that. You know, of course, you know, we probably all know somebody who's really, really young and they're just really spiritually advanced compared to everyone else, you know. Um, or maybe they're really, uh, you know, emotionally ahead of the game. They're really mature, you know, at a young age. And so everyone's different, but it's kind of more of a guide. And uh, so so those spiritual health, that's where they fit in there. And the kind of guide for reasoning why they are um, in each quadrant. So, yeah, miigwech. Miigwech. And uh, we're going to move on to the, the south quadrant. Or which now quick. Um, this quadrant focuses on summer heat, youth and adolescence, um, daytime, cedar, and physical health. Um, I'm gonna start off talking a little bit about cedar. Uh, cedar or kishki is a medicine typically cared for and processed by women. Um, you'll see it at a lot of our, our ceremonies and at places like our like our powwow. We use that to cover the arbor there. If anyone's been to the Sweet Grass Moon powwow, we have that yearly. Um, it's used to protect our our feathers, typically our, our feather boxes. A lot of the times, they will be made out of cedar because it is a protective medicine. And, um, you know, those boxes physically protect our, our feathers. And um, when someone passes on, we um, typically line the, the caskets um, in cedar. So that's, that's where we use that a little bit. And in daily life, you know, because it is a protective medicine, uh, a lot of um, Potawatomi people will put little sprigs, they're not really leaves, so the little pieces of cedar in our shoes so that we're, we're protected everywhere we go. I know other tribal citizens, myself inc included, we put um, little bits of cedar in our cars so that, you know, have that extra level of protection. You know, I always say progressive can only take you so far, you gotta have your cedar too. Um, so that's something that we do. And, um, you know, this quadrant, it's, it's about, you know, physical, physical health, like Bud was saying, you know, our youth, they're, they're getting out there. They got a lot of energy, you know, our youth are really active during the day, which really ties into that. And, um, when I think of, of my younger youth, I'm still a little bit youth, but, you know, when I think when I was younger, I really loved that season of, of summer. That's when kids get to be active and play and really go do what they enjoy to do. Um, 
you know, and it's like they're they're more focused on doing and and being and a lot more of that versus you know in their younger infant stage when they're more focused on thinking and learning you know it's more about play um are there any questions on that that south quadrant no ma'am but i would also like to point out that cedar is a product that naturally repels bugs which is a re very good reason why a lot of people keep it in their closets and use it for hangers because it keeps the the moths out of cotton and the bugs out of your closet. That's awesome. Just another way cedar protects. That's amazing. All right. If there are no more comments, I will move right on to the west. Uh, just based on the color on the on the wheel there, you know, this is kind of like you know, like your sunset. It's it's black, it's adult stage, fall. Um, you know, when I think of fall time, I think of it being a lot calmer and peaceful, you know, the leaves are, are starting to turn and, and things like that. Um, it's about nighttime, you know, it's like as an adult with, with children, I feel like that's when we get everything done. <laughs> that's when we're active because, you know, the kids are asleep and, you know, we're focusing on that emotional health and, and one's feelings. So that's really when we're thinking about the why, you know, adults, you know, we tend to always ask, well, why is that? And um, the medicine in this quadrant is is sage. Um, this is probably one of the medicines you'll see a lot more commonly out in public and at tribal doings because we use that sage to smudge. And if you don't know what smudge is, that is um, putting the sage in some type of container and uh, lighting it up on fire. And then it creates that smoke and we believe that smoke is, is cleansing. So um, for people, we use that smoke and we wash it over ourselves like you would water. And you could wash that smoke over, you know, the room that you're in or the space that you're in. And we believe that's really, it's cleansing. And it's been... Me on the meeting, honey. I'm trying to talk. And what's that all noise? Um, and so we use that sage to really, um, bring good thoughts and, and cleanse and even everything out. Um, there's several different kinds of sages, you know, typically it's white sage that we're using for these cleansings, um, not culinary sage, um, but there's a couple other species of sage that we'll use as well. Um, and then that one, I can't remember if it's the men or women who harvest that. Um, but sage, it's, it's a great medicine. Uh, we've been smudging both our government campus and the casino to try to bring that culture into our, our spaces and make sure we're cleansed and, and well that's a really great thing to see that people are are learning about about that. Do we have any questions or, or comments on on that quadrant? Uh, just one comment. Uh, scientifically, they have discovered that sage is a natural germ killer. So it's actually a very beneficial thing to smudge and I I might be incorrect, but I believe the uh the sage is the is a men's medicine, but I don't think it's as strong as tobacco because just from elimination because uh, sweet grass is female. Yeah, you're right. It is it is a men's medicine. I just couldn't recall for a moment there. It's been a long day. <laughs> 
and and Naomi was saying um that it that it's proved to to kill germs and that just proves that our traditions are correct and that it's a cleansing agent and how amazing is that that they're now discovering oh hey you know maybe the Anishinaabe knew a thing or two you know <laughs> it's just great to see that that knowledge is recognized all right yes you got a question in the chat as oh well. i have um here i'll have to stop broadcasting to check that all right let's see what type of sage did you say they used? Um, we use white sage typically. There we go. Now we're back to here. Awesome. Mama? Those are great questions. Okay, now moving on to the north. No, I'm on my meeting. Okay, so we're in the north, and that quadrant has to do with winter, you know, our elder stage, moonlight lighting up the sky, sweet grass, and our, our spiritual house. I think white is a very appropriate color because, you know, we've got winter and snow. That's white, of course. And a lot of our elders' hairs start to turn gray and white. And I like to tell them, oh, those are your wisdom hairs. You know, you're you're no longer a baby elder. You're full-fledged now that you've got your, your white. You know, that, that means they're really stepping into their, their place in, in our medicine wheel. Um, and you can, you can see that their hair almost resembles... Um, the sweet grass and in, in their braids and um i was told that our our sweet grass is the you know the braids of, of mother earth and if you've ever smelled sweet grass it has a very sweet scent and that for me reminds me of of elders and grandparents just because you know your grandma and grandpa you know they're sweet and they've got all that amazing knowledge and, and patience you know, and there's um, that medicine is one that people also smudge with sometimes, and it's used specifically to like make the room sweeter and and put out good energy, so that you can have um, deeper discussions and and be open to learning. Um, in our winter time, uh, traditionally, that's when we tell our stories, and a lot of those stories are are told and carried on by our elders. And I think that's really significant um, with this part of our medicine wheel, um, you know. And then with that elder stage, you know, it's kind of the and not to say the end, but it's just kind of like this is where you are and your place with everyone else. And that's a lot of the times why we try to get our elders and our, our youth together is because they're right next to each other on that medicine wheel. We really want them to make those connections with each other because they're right next to each other. Um, a lot of the reason why too, we try to get our, our adolescents and our adults together because they're neighbors on the medicine wheel. So really, when you look at the medicine wheel, um, it's everything as a whole. And to be a whole person, you need each quadrant. So they're all equally important and come together to be a well-rounded sort of deal. You know, it's it's like our, our societies, we need our elders, we need our youth, we need our teens and young adults and our adults to function and to keep going so like other teachings everything needs each other is the sort of idea to have it together in that circle 
So is there any thoughts or questions on the North Quadrant? I have a belly ache. I liked your thoughts on the gray slash white slash silver hair. Thank you. Awesome. Got those wisdom hairs. So Cass, is there a reason or that how each of the medicines got paired with the directions or is that just how it is or is there anything more to that? I think so. Um I like to relate the medicines to the um the health and and how we're thinking. Like for example, uh Sema and our, our mental health, you know, before asking a question with our tobacco, there's a lot of thinking that goes on. At least that's how I see it in my mind. And then in the next quadrant with the cedar and our and our physical health, um, you know, because it's a protector, I you know, I think of people putting on cedar oil and people putting cedar in their shoes. That's a very, very physical thing. And then on with sage and then emotional health. You know, it's like if we know there's a really stressful meeting, for example, at work, something we'll do beforehand is is we'll smudge. And that really, you know, brings everyone's emotions down and and gets us grounded. And then, of course, uh, sweet grass and spiritual health. You know, there's a lot of really significant spiritualness that has to do with sweet grass and the act of, of braiding and being connected to Mother Earth. And, and that's how I see that connection. Interesting. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Um, so I was also taught with the with the medicines and the directions uh, in the past. Uh, so tobacco really grows. Oh, if you look at Turtle Island, tobacco really likes to grow on the East Coast, and mm. cedar really likes the heat and the in the southern part of the country. And then uh, sage really only grow white sage only really grows uh, in the West, and it needs to be cold, so you need to be in the North for sweet grass. Wow. That's a really amazing way to look at things. I, I had never thought of that before. Awesome. Does anyone else want to share about the, the medicine wheel as a whole or some medicines, stories? It's an open discussion. I was actually, I was thinking about, um, cause I know that a lot of people use um, the medicine wheel for sobriety. And mm -hmm. um, I was actually wondering if there was um, with the seven, with the seven grandfather teachings, if there was a way to put them, I know there's seven of them, so it would make it hard, but is there a way we could apply them to the medicine wheel to, or if anyone knows anything about that? It's just been something I'm thinking about. Mm. Sometimes I see um, not necessarily correlating them with each quadrant, but sometimes I see them put um, them on the outside of the medicine wheel, just kind of sporadically, mm. not sporadic, but kind of spaced evenly across. Um, and I don't know, I've seen that for a couple of times and I, I wondered the same thing, whether it's like, is there a direct correlation or is it just an aesthetically putting it on there and spacing them out? Um, I'm not really too sure with that, but that's, I have seen them placed on the outside of the medicine wheel. And um, so, yeah, that's a really good question. Cause I'm, I, I don't know that there's a correct way to do it or not. I have seen it done. But then I I, I kind of think more it was more of an aesthetically thing, you know, aesthetically pleasing thing, trying to um, correlate the two together at the time. So I don't know. That's a good question. I I um 
I like to think about the seven grandfather teachings as everybody's going to be drawn to something different. Um, and even more so, even at different points in your life or different stages, or maybe you're going through something, you're possibly going to be drawn to a certain stage or, or a certain uh, grandfather teaching during that stage in your life too. So for everybody, it's kind of, it's really personable, right? Like, so the kind of grandfather teachings, that's one of the thing that's really amazing about them is, is um, when I, when I teach and talk about them, I, I, I encourage people to grasp on and kind of uh, focus on whatever one you're drawn to. And I encourage them to try to live by that teaching for three days, three days in a row. And by the end of that third day, you're going to realize that you're automatically doing the other six anyways. And so, but, uh, so really, I guess if you wanted to be personable with it, um, you could place them where you see fit, uh, throughout there, because there's not really a particular order with the seven grandfather teachings either. You know, they're kind of, again, it's really personable. It's really individualized, like how you see it, how you feel it, how you, how you're which one ever one you're kind of drawn a little more to and so yeah that's uh, that's a really good question but uh i would just uh, um put them where you see fit if that's the case and you can always make mention of that too you know i mean you could always say well this is this is what works for me this is what um how i see them going in different places of this and uh and and make note of it that way too so i mean that's a really good question. Yeah, like like Bud was saying, so for me personally, um I would put love in the east because I think of of babies and little ones and how you know, that's like the first thing they're learning is their is their parents and you know that unconditional love with their parents. So that's where I would put it personally, but maybe maybe someone else would put that, you know, later in life. But I have seen them on the outside of the medicine wheel before, too. And I, I just can't recall where I've seen them placed or if it had a significance. Make wedge. Um, I have a question, but this is a tough one. And please forgive me. I mean no disrespect if you could in 20 words or less tell me what is the medicine wheel for they're counting their words naomi you can tell I'm trying to get the right 20 words out and, and it doesn't have to be 20 either but just <laughs> I, i'm looking for some if someone asked me, well, what is a medicine wheel? And I would say it is. It is a guide to a well-rounded life. That's what I would say. Thank you. Now, so yeah, because how can you use you it in your daily life? Or is it just something that you look at as part of a whole I, I think it, it's both. I mean, really, and especially with me our medicines on there, um, I should be showering as much as I smudge. I should be putting cedar in my shoes every day. I should be praying with tobacco in the morning and asking for questions with it. I should be utilizing that sweet grass as often as I would do anything in, in my everyday. And that, that turns into something you use, you know, throughout your whole life. So what I just heard you say is it's a guide to my everyday living and a guide as to what to use to give me direction. It's a good way to look at it. Yeah, because, you know, I was always taught that, um, 
many many tribes have their own version of the medicine wheel and it's uh it's a symbol of uh to me it's a symbol and it's a physical representation of our cycle of life and when you break it down uh it can be broken down even to you know um every day you know it's a cycle of the day when you think about it you know when the sun rises until it sets and and so to me that's that's it that's what it's always been to me is like a physical representation of the cycles that we are all included in our in our teachings and it was told to me too that like you know this teaching could be you know two days long because what we have here in each quadrant right now isn't the end all be all there's many many different teachings that can be inserted into the quadrants as well and so this is kind of just like a, a the, the, I guess the easy version, uh, but for lack of better words, but that's the way I've always looked at it. And when you said, you know, like a, uh, points you in the right direction or you something you can follow, that's what I, the way I've always looked at it is because, because what you, when you look at it, everything in there follows a cycle, right? And so to me, that's what it, it's always been a representation of our cycles of life and, and it can be broken down into precious guy thank you that was very nicely said both of you i appreciate that that's i know that was way more in words but it's awesome to see so many different perspectives on on one thing it's like we could all look at the same picture and get something different out of it would it be possible to get a either an electronic or a printed copy of this so that I could print something out to put on my wall? Yeah. Or does yeah. the have something like that that I could get? Please. That's, cer that's certainly possible. I, I can email that to you. I, I think I still have your email. Thank you. Look. Like I have an eye. That's very cool. I'm trying to present. Okay. So, do we have any other thoughts or, or inquiries on our medicine wheel here? Um, I care it for you. What area I like to talk about I think don't it doesn't get talked about very often is um like you had mentioned Cass like a lot of times we try to get our elders and our youth together because you know they're you know they're in that you know next to each other and the medicine wheel but if you look at that line that that separates those quadrants the you know the east and the north um you know, we always say that, you know, everything that we do is in a circular fashion and that it's, you know, there's no beginning or end. But in actuality, when you think about it, our 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 life here on Earth uh, begins and ends at that line, even though it's a constant. We view things that are in a constant manner like that. It, that's a cycle and it can, it's going to perpetuate. It's going to keep going. Um, you know, that that line there um, represents um, the spirit world or heaven or, you know, the happy hunting grounds or however uh, your belief system recognizes that. That's what that that is. And, um, you know, we we understand and we we talk about how us here, like this, our bodies, this is we're, we're this is a, a human vessel for for our spirit you know or for our soul or however you you think or address that but you know our that this where we're you know many many walks of life and many beliefs will say that you know we are a spiritual being living a a, a physical experience right like and so yeah. uh, you know it's that line there is where where our our, our little ones you know where they that's where they choose their parents and that's where they call out and say you know to the creator that that they want to come here and they want to be with us and then when they get closer 
you know, to the end of their, their time here, you know, as, as elderly, you know, they're, um, that also they are becoming closer to the spirit and the spirit world again. And so like Cass had mentioned, you know, we believe that our, 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 um, you know, our elders and our, uh, that, are, you know, they are, are really, really powerful um, because they're close to the spirit and same for our little ones, our little ones too, you know, physical trait that they have, you know, at, at a certain age where there's a soft spot in their head, you know, and it's told that, you know, like some of the teachings that I was told is that, you know, um, in there are our children are still close to the spirit until that, that, um, that closes up. You know, and there's a lot of different uh, traditions and things that we do because our children are close to the spirit world um, because they, I mean, they, they just come from there, right? And so, like, you know, when we go to uh, a, a funeral or something, we're, we're encouraged not to bring our babies, you know, or, or if we do, that we mark them with ash because that way the spirit will recognize, hey, you know, that one is, that's their protection and that they're, they're here for a reason and that kind of steal. And so there's many, many different teachings that come with that. But I just wanted to make mention about that line there between that yellow and, and white quadrant there that, you know, that, that kind of really represents the spirit world and, and that our, our, our young ones and our elderly are, are, are extra powerful because and um and that's why we treat them with that utmost protection utmost respect um when they're in those stages of their lives you know we want to protect them and to care for them the best way we can and um and two you know i just also want to make mention that you know uh you know some of the teachings that we share you know whether on our culture corners or where you know whether it's a class you know these are teachings that we know to be true um for ourselves and for our community, our families, and we know that there, there possibly there are other teachings out there, and teachings can vary, you know, and they can be different from tribe to tribe, community to community, sometimes even family to family. And uh, the way I like to look at things is, you know, maybe you've heard some of these teachings in a different way, and you're hearing them, you know, our way now. Um, you know, a lot of, when I was younger, I, I kind of had a, a little bit of a qualm with that, you know, and I was kind of a little more biased to, well, I, I, I knew it this way. I grew up this way. And, uh, and now in a little bit in my older, a little bit older stage in my life, I've come to realize that, Hey, now I know that two ways, or I, I've heard that story three different ways. And I know that story three, di those teachings, three different separate ways. And I understand the, the variances and, the differences and so uh you know just wanted to to share that little bit about that that line there um what that represents um what i know what to represent and and share that with you encourage you guys as well uh continue to pursue you know your teachings and uh you know uh, if there's something else that you're curious about you know feel free to reach out to us we're always happy to help always happy to share with what you know with what we do know we're always happy to to uh to share with everyone so i'll, I'll say about that much miigwech miigwech bud and when he was talking i was actually thinking of a, a small story about my little one when when she was a baby and you know they say they're connected to that that spirit realm still at, at that young age and you know I, I tried to follow the traditions the best I could and you know I'm a true believer in our traditions because of this but my um she had some electronic toys in her room as a baby and and those toys would light up at night and I think that's because her little spirit was going around and, and playing so I, I made sure to never shut or lock any doors because I, I wanted her to be able to to freely explore and her spirit and play and and you know that that's what did it for me that's what made everything real to myself you know and showed that you know she was close to that that spirit realm in her young age just thought i'd share that little bit
Um, I just had a quick question um, as well. Um, I, I was you know, I joined this Zoom. Um, I saw it um, in the Facebook. It said, you know, all nations welcome. So, you know, I thank you for um, holding this space. Um, but I'm curious about thoughts of um, these teachings, um, you know, to to towards like people who are not um, within the tribe. You know, I'm trying to listen with, you know, respectful years and you know I, I think there's some tension there sometimes um with sharing of information that's you know for people within um the culture and the group to the outside and if you wouldn't mind speaking to that thank you yeah um well there's just there's a lot that's gone on historically so sometimes you know, there's that um, caution for good reason to, to share with the outside and um, something I, I don't always mention, but our, our medicine wheels, I, I was taught in my teachings that the colors were also representative of the different colors and, and skin tones of man. So everyone is there and we need all each other to be um, you know, a part of this circle. And so the way I look at it, um, you know, maybe not everything, but most of our things are, are open to the people of all nations for that reason, because they have a, a space in our circle as well. May I add a little something seen from... Um someone who's not as well versed in tribal culture as the rest of you. Um, in the reading that I have done and in the learning that I have, the, the knowledge that I have learned about my family, many of our grandparents were subject to um, the boarding schools, which in which the children were forcibly taken away from their families were taught to deny, not taught not to use their own language, were force fed the European culture, the European language, the European belief system and the European religion. Now, having learned all that and having heard all that, do you wonder that Native Americans are loath to share their culture with outsiders? To me, it speaks for itself. Did you know that Native Americans did not even get the vote in this country until the late 60s? So when I was born, my father could not even vote in this country. My mother could because she wasn't Native American, but my father could not even vote. And he was in the American military serving his country without a vote as to who would lead this country. I mean that that's all that's all true and and that's kind of why a lot of our our traditions and our, our culture you know we're bringing it back you know and that's for those reasons why even within our communities there's hesitancy to to learn about our our own culture you know and our own language because you know there's a huge generational gap from the children who never came home from the ones who did come home, but were too afraid to share. And, um, you know, their children of those people who are gone because their parents thought they were protecting their children by not sharing that knowledge. But, you know, now we're at a point where we're trying to bring those traditions and in, in our culture back to our people and um, get back to doing things that we used to do and and sharing all those teachings and learning to trust others to um, to really be a part of, of things that we do. And you have no idea how thrilled I am to see that. My own grandmother told her family 
that she was Greek. She never, to her dying day, she would not admit that she was Native American because she had been in a boarding school. So I am thrilled that you all are doing this. Mm -hmm. Very exciting to to see, especially our, our young, our really young ones, you know, in different communities learning their language and, and what their medicines are and just all these food sovereignty related activities and just seeing them out there and learning and growing. And, you know, we're all kind of learning and growing together and, and what a great thing that is to see. Well, it is getting close to our, our eight o'clock time and I want to be respectful of everyone's time. So if we could just have our, our closing thoughts, you know, we'll wrap this evening up. I just want to say miigwech to everybody on the call. It's um, always nice to see new faces, um, and especially that we're able to provide this opportunity, you know, for ones who, you know, may not live close, you know, and, and they uh, still have an opportunity to be a part of uh, our culture and part of our teachings and a part of the community. Um, so I, I appreciate each and every one of you. Um, I. I really enjoy sharing um, as much as, you know, as much as, as I can and am able. So uh, I just want to say miigwech. Uh, it was a good, great evening. Um, it's always nice to revisit our teachings and, um, and you learn something from everyone. Um, and so, yeah, I will say miigwech and uh, appreciate it. Pre appreciate all of you. Thank you also. I certainly enjoyed the teaching this evening. Yeah, thank you, Cassie. Thank you, Bud. Thank you, everyone. I really appreciate you taking your time out of your evening to be with us and to learn and share and have an open mind. I know it's intimidating sometimes, especially for me. I get that Zoom anxiety, you know, oh, do I want to talk? But, you know, my job kind of pushes me to talk, and, and that's a great thing because... You know, if we get the conversation going on, on talks like this, we can inspire others to to open their minds and have these discussions that are, are really needed as well. So once again, miguetch everybody. Um have a great night. Bye -bye. I'm up here.